as he snatched the phone, I've turned around and said, bro, what you fucking doing, man? Give my phone back. And he's like, nah, puts it in his pocket. So I go to take it out of his pocket. He goes, do that again, I'll, I'll stab you. Where the knife's gone through, it's gone through my lung, out the other side, through my aorta, which is my main artery, and into my heart. Mm. So it's hit everything along the way. You know, it just so happens to be wrong place, wrong time. That's it, exactly, man. And I think, you know, like it's mad because it's like wrong place, wrong time, then. Mm. But now I don't think that at all, man. I think like right place, right time, because the trajectory of my life has completely changed and I, I wouldn't change where I am now for the world. Do you know what I mean? What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the CEO cast, the number one place for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now today we've got a complete different, unique story. One that's heartwarming, a guy who's been through the mud and what he thought was going to be his final career path until a series of unfortunate events took place. And now we are here in what his place is called the pit gym. So a completely different transformation. Well, Actually, yeah, I said it right there. Anyway, let me just introduce you to Kieran Quinlan. How are you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm good, bro. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> say it again. Right? Say it yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Kieran Quinlan and that. What yeah. are you saying? How's your day going? All good, bro. All yeah. good. Yeah, man. Hot. Yeah, boys dripping. Absolutely today, Birmingham. <laughs> I was walking around looking for breakfast this morning, thinking yeah. I was in Dubai. Like the way I was, sure, I was sweating and that like, is moving mad hot. But uh, yeah, how's, how's life in general, man? All good, bro. All yeah. good. Positive. Yeah, I'm lo loving the gym that you got here. Thank the whole set up and everything like that. I'm going to show people on camera what it looks like yeah. after. No, it's on, man. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. Just to introduce people to where we are, what, what you do, and yeah. you know what you do for a living. Just give us a quick breakdown. Yeah, so I'm Kieran Quinlan and I own Birmingham's best body transformation facility. Yeah. So we were voted the best gym in the Midlands last year. Mm. Uh, we transformed over two and a half thousand people now, soon to be 3,000 by the end of this yeah. year. And uh, yeah, man, we've got some crazy, unique transformations. Um, but yeah, it's just going from strength to strength. We're outgrowing this facility at the moment, currently looking for a new one. Mm. Uh, and then branching out, we want to go, you know, UK wide. Yeah, but, worldwide. Uh, Where would you be in the next place? In Birmingham or would you Hopefully. So like, yeah, like I said before, man, I'm, I'm looking, uh, I want, basically, I want to have the UK's best transformation center. That's a, that's what I'm aiming for. Mm. So I want to have every aspect of a transformation under one roof. I want, you know, meal prep, cafe, sunbeds, everything. I want yeah. everything under one roof. So when you come here, you know, it's, one big part of what we do is the community. So we want people to spend as much time in this area as they can because we know when you embark on your on your fitness journey, uh, you know, a lot you'll get pushed back from your family, from your friends. Yeah. And you almost need to change your circle slightly because, you know, the people that you once were going out drinking with, taking drugs, doing all the rest of it, that you start pulling away from them slightly. Mm. So, you know, we want them to be a part of, of what we're building the and be part of our yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you think that there's a link between like, you know, oh, sorry, let me ask that again. Do you think that you know your whole life changes essentially, not just physically when yeah. you're transforming yourself, but mentally oh, in the way you are as a mate, person? A hundred thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't stress that enough. I think like a big part of like you know, obviously we'll go on to my story in a bit, but a big part of like my journey was uh, obviously transforming the, the physical transformation that I had and, and the transferable skills that give me to business and relationships and mm. just real life in general. I think, you know, the, what it teaches you, the discipline, the willpower, the consistency, all those things are, are attributes that you need to be a successful business owner yeah. or an entrepreneur, yeah. I feel like the people that would come here as well, like the people who come here to transform their yeah. bodies, I reckon they probably make friends here as well. They 100%. all go out like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's all in the same vibe. That's it, you mate. Know, they all want to go to the healthiest place to eat. Yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. That. No more drinking, no more smoking. One of them ones. So exactly. You actually make friends because everyone's around the same sort of mindset here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's bro. quite quite a great place to be. But I think you know what? Let's let's dive it back to before where we were at the pit yeah. gym, right? Let's talk about your upbringing, um, and and where everything started for you, man. Yeah, man. Because so, it's interesting. But as soon as you as soon as you sent me that Instagram message, I was like, yeah. yo, listen, yeah. this, this podcast needs it's to be shared. It's a deep the story. One. Needs to get deep. It goes <laughs> deep. We need to go in. Yeah, man. Well, okay. Well. I'll, I'll tell it how I tell it, do you know what I mean? So it starts, like I box from when I was seven years old. So I've yeah. always, always had a boxing background. So since I was seven, I was an amateur boxer. Um, and I've done it five to seven days a week. Where did you grow up in Birmingham? Yeah, in Birmingham, okay, yeah. yeah. I got screen, so I boxed at Hall Green, ABC. Yeah. Um, started off in Solihull, moved down a little bit, boxing gyms that is. And then uh, we, we, I started fighting for Hall Green. Um, and yeah, man, I loved it. It was my life, do you know what I mean? It was something that I was passionate about, it was something that I was really good at, that I took to. Um, and you know, I was never an aggressive kid, but I loved the sport, I loved mm. the competitive side, I loved, I just loved everything about it, I loved staying physically fit. Um, and yeah, man, so like, as I obviously progressed into my teenage years, like, all my friends were starting to go out and stuff. Um, I was never really a drinker. So I was like, but I wanted to make some money. So I started working. So I worked at, so I was a laborer for a bit. I was doing a night course in electrics. 
and I was How old were you have been at this point then? Uh, about 17. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 17 years old, uh, started at probably 16. And then uh, I worked for like call centers and stuff. And I was also working in Topman at town part time as well. Okay, yeah. So one night I was leaving, uh, I was leaving Topman uh, to go to a party to meet my friends. Yeah. My mates messaged me, he was like, listen, get on this bus. Meet me here and we'll go to this party. I was like, yeah, sweet, no problem. But I had no battery on my phone. I've been at work all day. So I said, listen, I've got no battery. I'll text you when I get there. So on the way, get on a bus I've never been on before. Fucking, it's a bit sketchy, man, sketchy area. Wait, I feel like you're getting straight to the series of unfortunate events. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. Hold, hold on, let's, let's hold back. Yeah, go, keep the audience retention. Oh, Trust okay, me, we've got to go okay, deep okay, in, cool, in a second. Man. But okay, just, go, just cool, to go back on it for a second, yeah. yeah. Man. So you've been boxing from the point you were seven years old. Yeah, man. And at the point where you're describing right now is 17. Yeah. So what was your, your boxing path like? Did you have any fights? Yeah, you, man. Like, so like I was, uh, I was fighting. So basically what had happened is because I moved to move gym a couple of times when I got to Hall Green mm. um, they had like a like a, a rule there where it's like you need to do like a hundred rounds of sparring okay. so at this point I only well, got before there. you have a fight yeah 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 okay, so yeah. I'd sparred for fucking years anyway but yeah. like when I come to that gym it was like basically you have to start because okay. I need to see that you're serious and, mm. and that you want to actually do because they're volunteers man so they're putting a lot of time and effort into the kids yeah. there man so they'll right. make sure that yeah, everyone like, wants to do it yeah 100% yeah. bro so don't make sure that you're there every day of the week man sometimes they're just for the first three weeks they basically like ignore you because mm. they want to see if you're going to stick it out do you mm. know what I mean so and then as you start to stick it out and they go okay he's serious he's here don't, they start putting their effort into you um, so I had five fights for Hall Green I lost my first one, but I got robbed. And then the next four was... Uh, <laughs> when you say got you got robbed, robbed what, what, was, what is it? A points decision? Yeah, man. So we finished on a points decision. But like, if you watch the footage back and that, I gave him a standing eight count and I was like pretty much on top of him for both rounds and that. So it is what it is. But you live in the, and he made yeah. me more hungry because the next time I thought, it was like, okay, well, I need to stop him then because I don't want to leave it up to the judges. i got to yeah. go in there and, and... Was it a rematch with the... No, no, nah, nah, different geezer. Oh, different geezer. But I yeah. went out there, fucking all guns blazing, man. I was like, yeah. oh, it's, it's, not, it's going... Yeah, yeah, so what, I stopped what, him in there first. What sort of weight class were you fighting at? I was fighting at lightweight, so I was only like okay. 57 kilo at the time. Yeah, because yeah. um, right now you'd look like you'd probably be heavyweight or yeah, something. Yeah, we're about 100 kilo now, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> 100 kilos of muscle, pretty much. Yeah, man. I need that as well. It's been a long journey, mate. I've been I've been every different type of body body shape on the way up. But yeah, man, so I had five fights for him. Uh, I stopped four of them. And then as I was going to the championships, yeah. uh, well, that's what, that's what I wanted to do anyway, man. So it was like, and then I uh, obviously, what happened happened sort of thing. So, so you, you wanted to be essentially a boxer, like pro boxer? Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 that's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like everything that I thought about, like day in, day out. It was mm. like I'd leave school, I'd go to the gym on the weekends, I'd be training. I'd, I'd just shed in my garden full of dumbbells and boxing bags and that. And I used to just, I'd finish trying, I'd run to boxing, yeah. train for an hour two hours, run home, train for another two hours. Like, it was my you life. Your life. I just loved it, bro. Yeah, honestly, I just, I just love everything about it. It's just, what, uh, yeah, what was it about it that you loved? I think, like, I think the competitive side of things, I think the discipline, um, just the fact that, like, you're doing something that not many people can do. Mm. It's a skill, do you know what I mean? I just think I, it was just something that, I don't know what it was about it. I think it obviously kept me physically in shape as well, which was always good at that age and that, because obviously, you know what I mean? Like, you want to look good for the girls and stuff like that, yeah, man. Course, so, yeah. so you're always taking care of yourself, and it. Yeah. So it was like, that was like one of the things that, you know, what was always good about it was that it kept me in shape. Mm. I love the competitive side. I love the fitness side, and I love the competition, man. It was just like this is nothing like getting punched in the face and punching someone in the face. <laughs> Honestly, bro, it's like it's a different. You still like, have the skills today to have yeah, yeah. So like, obviously, when I got told I couldn't box anymore, it rocked me. But I could still do the training. Mm. So for years, I didn't do any of it because yeah. I was just like, I don't even want to. I don't want to be a like. I don't want to do it if I can't do it fully. Okay. And then when things like started progressing, I wanted to turn my hand to it again. Like I still box now, like I lick the bags and I, you know, I jump in with a sparring now and then with like a few different people and that. But like, yeah, the skills don't leave you, mate. Like when you've got a good pedigree of boxing, like you're still, you can, you're still probably better than 90% of people, do you know what I mean? And like then that, obviously, yeah. You get like the elite, but yeah, man. But the good thing is, I mean, the skills that you have installed in your head from boxing, yeah. like you said, the determination, the discipline, yeah, the man. mindset, everything, that, that will never go regardless no, no, no. of what happens in your no, life. No, definitely, bro. And I think as well, like, one thing I've realized is when I'm not training, how much more, you know, aggressive and yeah. like snappy you become and just, yeah, man, like you're just not in control of your emotions as much. I think yeah. it's one thing that sort of, it disciplines you mentally as well. Yeah. So I mentioned, obviously, now we'll get to the series of unfortunate yeah, events because people are wondering, thinking, what's going on, <laughs> sort of thing, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a traumatic experience for you, yeah, if you want to talk about it in deep or anything like yeah, that, but I mean, it would, it would be great to you as well. So 
um, yeah, explain to me exactly and the audience exactly what happened. Yeah, man. So basically. So if you're watching or listening to this podcast right now, chances are you like to stay on top of things, which is why I want to mention our sponsor today. The Economist. Today, the world seems to be moving faster than ever with new things occurring every single day. For example, things such as inflation, tax rises, and even something like Boris Johnson stepping down as prime minister. There's news and events unfolding at pace everywhere. But now for the first time, you can get a 30 day trial of The Economist so you don't miss a thing. Now, the reason why I love and use The Economist is because not only does it give me a perspective on things that are going on in the world, but also allows me to dive deeper into certain subjects and certain topics so I can learn more myself. With this free trial, you get access to in-depth, independent coverage of world events through things such as podcasts which you guys obviously love webinars expert analysis and even the extensive archives so whether you want to see what's happened recently in the world or you want to dive deeper into certain issues that's already been ongoing the economist is for you because it allows you to get global perspective and distinctive clarity so it's simple go to economist.com forward slash ceo cost for access to in-depth topics that matter to you the most and also be able to get an understanding of events that unfold all over the world once again that's economist.com forward slash ceo cost to start your 30 day trial with the economist and get your understanding today because the world World won't wait. Like I said, so when I was leaving Tottenham, I was yeah. going to this party um, and I got on this bus, sketchy area. Um, and when I got off, there was like a big group of lads in the park opposite us. Um, was this at night or? Yeah, at night, man. It's probably like 10 o'clock on the night. Okay, yeah. Um, so I was thinking, fuck me, man, big group of lads over there. I'm on my own, you know what I mean? And the thing is, bro, I've always dressed like this man, I had a quiff and fucking like, and at the time I was only like slight, man. So I was probably about, you know, 60 kilo at the mm. time. Um, and I was wearing my top man gear, like fucking skinny jeans and that. Proper love on Yeah, you know what I mean, man. So it was like, and it was like that indie look back in the day, big fringe yeah, and that. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, this big group of lads over in the park and I was thinking, I'll just keep myself to myself, man. I had my phone turned off because of the, uh, obviously I had no battery. This geezer randomly comes in to the, uh, to the bus stop. What, so did you avoid them completely? Like, Yeah, man, so they're just in the park over yeah. there, do you know what I mean? I could see them and I'm just thinking, fuck me, man, I don't want like, yeah, my yeah, yeah. own and I don't want no trouble on that. And this geezer just randomly walks in and uh, he goes, oh, do you see them lads over there? I was like, yeah, yeah, and he was like, oh, we'll stick together, man, don't worry. And I'm thinking, oh, bro, I don't even know who the fuck you are, do you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. standing there, so I get my phone out, turn it back on, and I check the, the bus times with the light from my phone. Next thing I know, he's bowled over, boom, snatches my phone out of my hand. What, the geezer did? The geezer did, yeah, yeah. just to get together Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight away, bro, like, just switched on it. Like, I'm thinking, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So, as he snatched the phone, I've turned around to him, like, bro, what, what are you fucking doing, man? Give my phone back. And he's like, nah, puts it in his pocket. So I'll go to take it out of his pocket, he goes, do that again, I'll, I'll stab you. Thinking, oh, what's he on about, man? Like, like at this time, man, I've never had an encounter like this in my life, do you mm. know what I mean? I'm not thinking he's got a knife, I don't think. I'm not thinking anything, man. I'm just thinking, give my fucking phone back. So the bus pulls up as this is happening. So we just jump straight onto the bus. So obviously I jump on after him. There's, there's the bus driver and there's one woman on the bus. So again, man, I'm not thinking. I'm just thinking, fuck you, man. Give my shit back. So I walk up the stairs after him. There's no one on the top deck. It's just him. So as I get to the top, top of the stairs, he sort of like manoeuvres himself around me. So now he's by the stairs and I'm back towards the back of the bus sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. And he's like, sit down. I'm like, nah. So he pulls this knife out. I'm like, fuck's sake, man. So he puts it towards me. He goes, sit down. So I sit down and he sits next to me and I'm thinking, right, I'm going to have to talk my way out of this now. Do you know what I mean? A fucking like, it's all happening so quick, man. I'm 17. So he, been, he, been, pulled, he pulled out the knife, mm, told you to sit down mm, and sat down next to you. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So like, you're thinking, man, like, so bus window here, I'm here, he's here. Now he's in the aisle, so I can't even get out. Yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? He's blocked you in, basically. That's it. So he's sitting there and he's just got this knife flat out. Yeah. Like leaning like that with it on his hand, he's just like, he goes, empty your pockets. I went, nah, bro. I was like, nah. I was like, mate, I work hard for everything I've got, man. I was like, you've got my phone. I went, just call it a night. I went, safe. Like, here's what it is. And he went, give me to the, I'll give, I'm going to give you to the counter free and then I'm going to stab you. And I was going, nah, mate. I was like, listen, you've got it. You've got my phone. I was like, just leave it. I was like, because all I'm thinking is like, I'm a young lad. I don't even know where the fuck I am at this point, man. I'm going to this party. This is another part of Birmingham. Yeah, man, I've never been there before, so yeah. I don't even know where I am. I'm on this random bus I've never been on before. I'm with this fucking scatty geezer with a knife, and I'm just thinking, like, what the, what the fuck? And I was like, nah, man, because I need my fucking money so I can get home, at least get a taxi or whatever. And he goes, three. And I'm like, he ain't going to do it, man. He goes, two. And I look at him, and he goes, pulls a knife back like this. He goes, one. Swings a knife around. Boom. Stabs me, but I don't really, like, I, I, I don't realise I've been stabbed. It just feels like a punch because as as he throws the knife round, I sort of put my hands up. So yeah. 
I don't really feel like anything. Because you're in boxing as well and probably getting punched on a yeah. daily basis in sparring and that, you're yeah. probably used to that sort of feeling. Potentially, of- bro. And I think as well, like, obviously the adrenaline just kicks in, so you yeah. don't really feel anything. So as his, as his hands come round, I've grabbed his arm, hit him, punched him about three times and knocked him off the chair. So as I've, I've got up now, he's on the floor. I don't go to the back of the bus. I'm like, God, get the fuck up then, let's go. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm losing my head at this point. I think, he, mate, he's just trying to kill me. Mm. So he gets up, he grabs, he's dropped the knife, so he grabs the knife. So did the knife go in you at that point or not? Well, this is the point, bro. I, I didn't realise, I don't realise what's going on, man. Okay, I just yeah. sort of, it was just a fucking scramble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's, he's leaning up the seat now, he's a bit rocked. And I'm going, come on then, let's go, like, drop the knife. We'll have a strength there, do you know what I mean? Mm. Thinking, I'll take him, man, I don't care. He was, he was a big lad and he's obviously older than me as well. And yeah. I was thinking, fuck you then, like, let's go. And then um, he went, ah, look here, you're dying. So I looked down and I was literally just covered in blood. Yeah. Like, mate, I've never seen anything like it. It was like from here down to my toes. So like where it was, I just put my hands over it, just panicking, thinking, what the fuck? Like, Ooh, like yeah, I'm scared yeah. at this point now. And I put my hands over it, mate, it squirts through my fingers. And he goes up the bus window. Mm. And I'm like, like, I'm panicking now. And I'm going, mate, just give my phone back. I need to call an ambulance. Mm. And he was like, pass me my hat. Cause I must have hit his hat off while we were fighting. So. I'm thinking, give me my phone, you fucking mad bastard, man. I'm bleeding out. And he was like, give me my hat. So I kicked him his hat, thinking he's going to throw me my phone now. He picks his hat up he tries to, and he tries to run off the bus. So I chase him again. I'm trying to grab a hold of him. And we get down the stairs. He turns around, he tries to stab me again. He starts fucking doing this, man. Start putting a knife at me. And he goes, he goes, come near me, I'll fucking stab you again. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Obviously that one woman was on the bus and, it, and, and the driver. Mm. So I turn to the woman, I'm going, please, please call me an ambulance. I was like, I think I'm going to die. I think I'm going to die. And he, she's like, uh, she was like, pale as a ghost, mate. Looking yeah. at me like that, like she petrified. Shook, yeah, she, she didn't even say anything, man. She's just looking at me like, I don't know like, if you've ever had a nightmare like that, man. Like, you know, just, just like you're trying to talk to people and there's just nothing. Yeah, no, no, nothing's happening. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm trying to talk to her, man. She's just it's looking like, at me. Like, as if you've seen a ghost, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So I turn to this geezer and I'm like, mate, just give me my phone back, man. I need to call an ambulance. And he was just like, fuck, get, get the fuck away from me. So then he turns to the bus driver. He puts his hand through where you pay for the bus, starts trying to stab the driver, going, you keep fucking driving or I'll stab you as well. So the driver just carries on driving the bus. Mate, I'm feeling completely helpless. I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. I'm bleeding out. Woman's not speaking to me. Driver's carrying on driving the bus, man. It's like a, like a nightmare, do you know what I mean? Yeah. At the point of where you got down the stairs, were yeah. you still standing or did you? I'm still standing, bro. Okay. I'm still standing. I don't know, mate. I can't even explain it. The doctors can't even explain it, man. But I'm like, I'm standing and I'm standing in front of him. Yeah. And I'm going, give me my fucking phone back. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. At this point, bro, mate, blood is just, it's all everywhere, everywhere. So, He's pointing this knife at me so I won't come near him. Anyway, the bus driver carries on to the next stop. He opens the doors, the geezer just runs off. Well, the bus driver? Oh, no, 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 no. The, the guy, yeah, he yeah. runs off. So as he runs off, I'll just sit back and I'll just fall into the chair. And like, mate, it's like the life just leaves my body. Like, I can't even lift my hands anymore. I can't, like, my eyes are just shut in. I can feel like myself just like going, do you know what I mean? Like, when I'm breathing, I can feel the air going through the hole in my mm. chest. So every breath I'm taking, this is like, like weeping and fucking coming in and out. Um, so the woman then runs over, she's on the phone to the ambulance, they're telling her to put pressure on my chest, the bus driver comes out and he's like, what's your name? So I'm repeating my name and my address, my name and my address, I'm not even answering questions anymore, I'm just saying my name and my address, I'm thinking, mate, no one's going to know who I am, I'm on this random bus in the middle of fucking nowhere, with a fucking hole in my chest, I'm about to die, no one's going to know who I am, I'm just repeating my name and my address, from my name and my address, and uh, Next thing I know, man, like everything just starts going dark. Like literally, every bit of my heart, like it's just closing in. I can't say anything anymore. I can't lift my arms up. I can't fucking speak. But I'm, I'm aware. Do you know? I know what's Still going on. Still conscious of what's going Still on. Still conscious, but yeah. I'm not. I'm. I'm lifeless. Do you know? Yeah. I can't move anymore. So then the blue lights start flashing. So I know the ambulance people are here now. They come in, bomb, rip my shirt off, put me on the bed on the ambulance. I remember the cold hitting me as I come off the bus, and uh, they rushed me to to A and E. As I'm like, as I'm, I'm, as I'm in the ambulance, I'm saying to them, like, am I gonna die? And they're like, nah, nah, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine. Like, proper chatting to me and that. Like, I remember I'm talking and I'm like, oh, I might be all right, man. And I remember coming off the, I remember coming out of the ambulance. I remember being pushed up to the hospital. And then as I get there, they're sticking all needles in me, man. I'm getting them in my neck, in my hand. Um, so where the knife's gone through, it's gone through my lung, out the other side, through my aorta, which is my main artery, and into my heart. Mm. So it's hit everything along the way. So they've had to drain my lung at the same time. So they've cut my rib, my, the, my ribs open, put a pipe in there to drain my lungs, yeah. put two in my stomach, 
And every time, like, I'm, they put something in me, I'm saying thank you to them. I'm like, thank you, thank you. Like, without even realising, I'm just like, they're saving me, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, thank you, man. They're cutting me, stick something in me, man. I'm, thank you. Yeah, thank you, nice one. And then, like, they cut, start cutting my jeans off. Yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, don't cut my jeans. Don't cut my jeans, man. I want to. Expensive yeah, jeans. Yeah, well, they weren't expensive at the time, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, these are my nice ones, man. Yeah. And they're like, nah, too late. So they've, like, cut them off. Why do they need to cut your jeans off, though? What's that? Why did they need to they just needed me for everything off. Okay. They just needed everything okay, off, man. Yeah. I, I, I think when you go into like into surgery, man, they just they need everything off. Need you sort to of be thing. free. Exactly. Or they need you to be free. I'm of. guessing that's what it is, yeah. man. I don't really know the ins and outs, man. But as um, so what they do, they give me a full blood transfusion on the spot. So the same way as like the life was leaving my body, it was getting darker. Like every bit in my heart, it started getting a little bit lighter, and I could start to see again. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm gonna be all right, man. This is fucking bizarre. So I go to sit up and they're like, no, 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 stay down, like, what are you doing? Like, relax, yeah. relax, we're going to sort you out, man. Like, but the blood's obviously flowing back through and I'm feeling okay. So they start wheeling me to theatre. Uh, and on the way, I see my mum, and my mum's like hysterically yeah, crying, man. Like, yeah, yeah, mate, like crying her eyes out. I've never seen her like that before. And I turn to her and I just say, listen, I'm going to be all right. Like, I love you. I'll see you in a minute. Don't worry. And uh, as they start pushing me into theatre, like, Mate, my chest just goes warm. I just remember this mad sensation, like just warm, like like someone's just poured like a cup of tea on me, man. Like a just warm feeling. And uh, next thing you know, man, like everyone's around the bed running, and the doors are slamming open. You know, like Holby City or something. Yeah, doors yeah, are just yeah. like, someone's just coming. Yeah, yeah, man. Like yeah. That, just like, and I remember thinking, what what's going on? Do you know what I mean? And then my chest is getting really tight, and I'm like, I can't breathe anymore. I don't know what's going on, man. So they, they throw, put me into this room. They throw me onto the table. And I hear my fucking, the, the beep, the beep, heart, heart monitor. Mate, thing. flat lines. Yeah. Beep, long beep, man. And I'm thinking, that's it. Like, next thing you know, I'm trying to throw myself off the bed. And, uh, they come over, stick a needle in me. Boom, eyes closed. And I'm like, I think I remember getting sick as well, man. And I remember as my eyes closing, the nurse standing there, like, stepping back, man, because I've literally just fucking projectiled all yeah, over yeah, yeah. And it's like, eyes closed. So up until the point of where they're, you know, slamming the doors down, yeah, you thought yeah. you were basically going to be all right? Yeah, in, yeah, like, yeah. You mate, everything I, was I, 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 mate, I thought, I don't know, mate, you don't know what to fucking think of that, yeah, no, like, of that stage, do you, man? Yeah. And I'm set, like, I forget my age sometimes, like, I'm 17, I've never experienced anything like this in my life, man. Mm. It's just like completely out of this world experience. And it's like, you know, all these mad thoughts are going through my head, man. I'm thinking about my family, I'm thinking about my friends, I'm thinking like, you know, am I going to see these people again? Like, And then as they give me the blood transfusion and I feel myself like, so I got to fill back up and it was like, it was a mad sensation. And I remember thinking, I'm going to be all right now. I'm going to be all right. And then as I started running with the bed, that went again. Yeah. It was like, game over again. Do you know what I mean? And then uh, as my eyes closed, it was just black. Do you know what I mean? Darkness for like, it, it feels weird because it's like, it felt like 10, 15 minutes. But obviously I was in surgery for hours and hours. Uh, while I was in surgery, my heart stopped three times. Um, and the third time, the nurse had to physically take my heart out of my chest and beat it for me to so I could stay alive. So like massage my heart. So I feel violated when I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine. I'm just like, yeah. Probably bro. the way I imagine it is completely wrong. Yeah. But like that is that's mad. It's a mad story, and it's so a like, man. You had to pump your yeah, heart. Yeah, man. So she physically put her hands in my chest, up, took it out, and massaged yeah, it. I didn't man, even so. know that was a thing. Me either, bro. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They told me afterwards. So as I'm like, so I wake up in intensive care the day after got a fucking big tube in my mouth and I'm like trying to speak. <laughs> can't breathe, can't speak. Mm. Grabbing the nurse, give me a hug. My mum my, my mom and my mum's boyfriend's there, man. I never hugged my mum's boyfriend. I'm like, come on, fuck. Grabbing him like, not even real. Obviously, I'm under so much anaesthetic. I've had open heart surgery. I shouldn't even be moving my arms, man. I'm trying to grip people. Mm. So the nurse comes over, sticks her hand on my head, pushes my head into the pillow, <laughs> pulls this big white tube out of my mouth. And I'm like, <gasps> take this deep breath for the first time. And I'm like, I just remember like speaking gibberish, man. I don't even, I'm that dosed up on like morphine and that. I yeah. don't even know what's going on. And uh, then I fall back, then I go back to sleep. And then it's like, I wake up again, my friend's there. And I wake up, go back to sleep, wake up again, another group of people are there. And it's just a mad feeling, man, like coming in and out of consciousness, man, seeing all these different people. Some of them are like trying to make me laugh, smiling at me. Some of them were just devastated, crying their eyes out. And uh, I remember, man, like fucking hell, this one bit, man. So like, after like, it's about, must be late on the night, like no one's there when I wake up the next time. And it's pitch black and I'm thinking like, I don't know what's going on. Like I haven't even had the time to assess the dog. Process what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I like kick the sheet off me and I roll myself over to the side of the bed and I stand up and I start walking out of the, walk, cause the curtain's drawn and I'm just in bed like all these machines beeping and I've got wires everywhere. Mm. 
and I'd throw, I'd just get, get up out of bed, just start walking. And as I'm walking, man, I'm dragging these like buckets of blood behind me. Yeah. Obviously, they've been draining my lungs, so this tube's connected to this like bucket of blood. These two are connected, and I'm just dragging all these fucking like, oh, what the fuck's <laughs> going on, man? So the nurse runs in the room, no, 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 get back in bed, get back in bed. So like, put me back into the bed, and I'm like, well, where is everyone? They're like, listen, like, like, uh, we'll get, I'll call, I'll call someone in, like, don't worry, they'll be here in a minute, sort of thing. And uh, and like, at this point, man, I, I don't even remember what's happened to me. Um, until the police come, and then the police start like interviewing me, mm. and they go like, you know, do, do you remember what happened? And as I start like to recollecting it, like yeah. I start fucking getting all worked up. Obviously, fucking as you I'm, would, do you know what I mean? Yeah. When I'm in hospital, like, covered in machines, and I don't know what's happened to me. I'm obviously crying and that. So the nurse comes over again. Stop. You need to stop speaking to him. Like his heart rate's too high. Like he's just had heart surgery. He needs to calm down. Mm. So like to get the police out of the room and that. And I remember just being off, like. like what the fuck sort of thing. Um, so I'm in, I'm in the hospital for two weeks. I'm in, a, I'm in intensive care for a week. And then I'm uh, on a ward for a week. And during my time in intensive care, I had, uh, there was like another lad that come in um, and he was stabbed as well. Uh, similar sort of place. Someone that you knew? Or I just didn't know him, nah, nah. Yet. But like, I just like, obviously my family was chatting to his family, like two yeah. sons, similar age, been through a similar experience. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately he passed away, man. So oh, he was in a, he was in a coma for like the whole time he was in there. And then, uh, yeah, he passed, man. So it just shows how lucky I was, man. It's just like, you know, you hear, like when I say all these things, it's like, it's mad to like deep it. Cause I just think, it was that that close, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, so from when you were being stabbed, I've got to ask this question. You yeah, were not God, involved in any sort of crime or gang yeah, activity, man. nothing no, like no, that. No, just no. a normal lad just living normal. in Birmingham, yeah, going bro. to the boxing gym and enjoying life. Yeah, yeah. And then just, with, you know, just so happens to be wrong place, wrong time. Sort That's of thing. it, exactly, man. And I think, you know, like, it's mad because it's like wrong place, wrong time then. Mm. But now I don't think that at all, man. I think like right place, right time because the trajectory of my life has completely changed and I, I wouldn't change where I am now for the world, do you know what I mean? And it was like, I almost had to go through that experience to to go through all the emotions and the mental health problems and all the trauma and everything that I went through to build the, build the resilience and the person that I am today, do you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, a lot of people say, oh man, why don't you just give me your stuff? Wrong place, wrong time, all this stuff. And I'm just like, man, eh? mm. like it happened the way it happened, man. And I'm happy it did now, do you know what I mean? So I want to ask as well, right? So obviously after you got stabbed, naturally you'd probably have like some sort of PTSD. Yeah. Right, but with what you exactly what you just said that mm. you know, you're you're essentially grateful for the path that it led you yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that helped you recover from the PTSD? Like, do you no longer think about it in, in a traumatic way? Yeah, man. So like, obviously, you're, obviously you're very open to speak about it right now. Yeah, yeah, And if yeah. it was like a lot more traumatic, yeah. it would probably be a lot harder for you to speak on. Of course, bro. And the thing is, don't get me wrong, mate. It, it was traumatic for many years after. Um, and like, I, I masked it a lot. I pretended I was okay. And I was going out, like drinking, taking drugs, stuff that I'd never done before, do you know what mm. I mean? And I'm out every weekend and I'm, mate, and I'm fighting all the time, like, cause I can't, cause obviously after, after I got stabbed, like, I went to the doctors, um, to get signed off and I said to them, well, like, well can I box again? Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, obviously it was a big part of my life. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, like, course, it was yeah. my, that was my goal. That was your, like, profession. Yeah, exactly. Sort of thing, yeah. Um, and they were like, nah. And I was thinking, nah, oh, surely not, man. Like, I can. Mm. Like, I'll be okay. And they were like, nah, like, you can't. So I was like, oh, who else can I speak to? And they were like, oh, you can go to this specialist. So I went to a specialist. So the specialist was like, nah, listen, he was like, you know, you might be okay in a few years. Like, right now, you've got eight rings of metal holding your sternum together. If anything was to dislodge and cut you from the inside, like, you can basically bleed out. Um, I got like a newly sewn aorta. Like, there was a, a centimeter and a half gap in my aorta where the knife had gone through. Yeah. You know, like any like excessive like exercise at that point well, could have fucked it up, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So there was loads of little things, man. And I think, do you know what? Well, looking back now, I feel like it was just a risk for the doctor to put his name to it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like now I'd be fine. That was all temporary stuff though, isn't it? Like yeah. the metal holdings. Nah, no, they're still there. Oh, they're, they're still there yeah, now? Yeah, they're still there Okay, now, so yeah. even if, now if you've done like extreme yeah. sports, obviously you do personal training. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's quite extreme anyway. Yeah. But I mean, no, it's a relevant question. I mean, so there was no way you could have boxed in at all. Yeah. After. So, now, well, this is what they were telling me. I went to three. I went to three doctors, and mm. all of them said no. Yeah. 
Um, and it was only because I went back to boxing. I went back to boxing and I was running and I was like, no, it was mad because obviously after you have open heart surgery, your sternum's been cut open. So the thing that holds your rib cage yeah. is open. So it's been held together with rings. And I'm still doing this electric snort course. So after I finish, but I'm trying to get my life back on track. I'm just like, fuck it, man. I'm going back to work. I'm going back to, I'm going back to uh, night school. I'm going to get my electric done. I'm going to go back to boxing. Like, fuck all this, man. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back. Yeah, man, I'm yeah. just going to go back to normal. So. Was that straight after or? Did yeah, you it was, uh, I, I was in my house for a month. After yeah. I didn't leave my house, I, I, I was two weeks to even pour myself a cup of a cup of tea. I yeah. couldn't pour, I couldn't pick a kettle up. Um, it was like there was loads of little things I couldn't do. Like just it was mad. Um, and like to think now, when I think back, it was just like I was incapacitated for a, a, a while, man. Like I couldn't use my arms. I think after my uh, after this as well. Like what happens is because your rib cage has not come back. When you when you get it stitched back up, your shoulders are all fucked as well, man. So I'm walking around like this, like with shoulders up here. This one's like all tight here. So it takes me ages to like, I was walking, yeah man, so like even, even afterwards, I was walking around the hospital trying to get my shoulders back to normal. And uh, I was saying to this woman was looking at me like all weird and I went, my shoulder's still fucked. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I went to like the, I, went, I, I was sitting, I used, cause as soon as I could walk and I knew I was up and about, I wanted to get back, like, I just wanted to get back to normal. Back so feet, I, yeah. I was down in the cafe, uh, cafeteria, man, with a load of uh, war vets. And it was like one of the most humbling experiences, man. I was walking to this fucking canteen. And I was like, oh my God, like, I can't believe this has happened to me. Like, I'm on my own. Like, no one's gonna, like, no one's gonna, like, no one's gonna understand this. And as I walk, walked up to the door, some geezer comes out in a wheelchair, no legs, mm. holds the door for me. Oh, is it? Yeah, it holds yeah. the door for me. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck am I moaning about, man? Legend. Like, it was just humbly, man. Yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah, off you go, man. And I was like, oh, cheers, bro. And I walked in and there was a big table of like, um, like army lads that has obviously just come back from like Iraq. Yeah. And, uh, they just, all of them had like bits blown off them and that were all there, like fucking like scars and all this. And I was just sitting there and I was just thinking, right, them lads have gone into that. Do you know Did what you mean? Talk to like, any of them I spoke to a couple of them. Yeah, man. Yeah. They're like, just good lads. And they're just like, I didn't, like, I didn't really, at that point, man, I wasn't really processing it. So I wasn't really telling anyone, I think anyone that had happened to me yet. I was just like, sort of just was in there sort yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. So it was a bit of a mad one, but. Yeah, so after obviously I come out, um, I was going back to night school and stuff, and obviously this was still fucked. So I had to wear, I had steel toe cap boots in a in a bag, and I used to have to wear my rucksack on the front of my chest. Yeah. So I was like walking to night school like this, Why? And just because I couldn't put it on my back because it was pulling oh, my pressure. pulling my chest oh, yeah, okay, open. Okay, okay, do you know okay, what I mean? Safe, so I had to w- walk with it on my, on my front. Okay, yeah. So like I had to walk walk down the road like that, but like every I just managed everything, man. Like I was just like no way. I, like I'm gonna sit and mope around, man. Like I need to, I need to get back on, need to get back on track. The police eventually catch that guy. Yeah, man. I caught him. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So he done. He got IPP, so he was in prison for five years. He had to serve five years. Yeah. But IPP is like basically in for public protection. Yeah. So uh, it's up to the police and the public. prison Our whether prison, they yeah. let they let him go out. So he has yeah. to go for appeals. Um, so I think he's actually been ten years now, um, but he's he's out now. Is that? Yeah, yeah, man. I was. Uh, he messaged me not long ago, actually. Is it? Yeah, bro. What was that conversation like? That's yeah, mad, bro, mad. Um, yeah, no one. Like, I haven't even told anyone about this, man. That's, that's mad. That's, yeah, that's a strange yeah. one. So, did he? How did he get in touch with you? How so did he basically, know? man, it's weird, weird, weird fucking experience. To be fair, man, I was just sitting at home, man, and my phone started pinging off, and I was thinking, oh, is that? Oh, went on there. Uh, loads of likes on all my all my shit on Facebook and a few comments on that, and I was thinking, weird. So I went on there, it was him. You thought it was a girl at first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. Um, so then I was on there, and he was like, so the, uh, yeah, man, so he was like, one of the comments was something like. This is after he's come out? Yeah, well, okay. he must, I didn't even know at this point. I was, I, the police hadn't rang me, no one's told me nothing, man, but like, I'm getting messages, so I'm assuming he's. So well, this is only, if he's come out, then that was only what, two years ago, roughly? Uh, so like yeah, that? man, it was like middle of lockdown, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, which again, man, like a mad experience, because it was just like everything was going on, and then that happens, and it was like another curveball. Yeah. So, like, he messages me, and he's just like, uh, sorry, sort of thing. And I'm like, mad. And then he's like, Did you know who it was straight away? Yeah, I knew, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then he's commented on another thing, and he's like, I wish we could go back to that day. Um, when I was like, mad. So I just message. I, I replied to the comment and I just said, "Listen, like, message, de- like, private message me. Don't comment on my stuff, sort of thing." Um, so then he message. Then he jumps into the messenger. Big mess. Big long messages. I'm so sorry. I thought about you every day. I can't believe this has happened. Like, um, you know, I want to meet up with you. I want to do like. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? 
fuck, man, like, this is all too much for me, man. Like, for years, bro, like, I've, like, I've, I haven't even mentioned him, do you know what I mean? I put it to the back of my mind on it. Um, and, yeah, he's just sort of, like, messaging me, messaging me. And then I get a phone call from uh, Remedy, so which is, uh, it's basically, like, um, what is it called? Um, restorative justice. Okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you meet the, the, the perpetrator, they meet the victim, you have a conversation okay, yeah, cool, in a cool. controlled environment. Yeah. So I'm thinking, wow, oh, mad. Go on then. Yeah, let's do it. Do you know what I mean? So mm. a few things happen and that, but it's still happening, bro. So like, it's been a few weeks sort of thing. So a few weeks since what? Uh, it'll be a few weeks when I go to meet him. Like. Oh, you haven't met him yet? No, no, no. Oh, shit, not yet. mad. No, no. What's your feelings towards that? Do you know what, bro? I think like one of, a couple of the things that you were saying, it was like, uh, He's very familiar with me, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like he's watched a few of my things and like we've chatted and that. And uh, like he was obviously chatting to me, he was obviously looking at all my stuff and that. So I feel like he thinks he like he knows me better than he does sort of thing. So a lot of the things he was saying was like, Because you're an online guy, mate. isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah. And he's obviously watched all the stuff and that. And like, you know, I think he thinks we've got a connection. Well, to me, bro, I don't, I don't know him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Our relationship ended the day he fucking stabbed me, man. Yeah, I don't know him. He's the me. guy who changed your whole life. Exactly. Exactly. For the better or for the worse, whatever Mate, the outcome was, was all do down to you at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. But I mean, he's the guy for the reason why your whole life had to change. Yeah, definitely, man. And I think the the feeling that, like, the thing that I saw I want to explain to him is we don't have a relationship, do you know what I mean? Like, what what's done is done. Yeah. What's happened has happened. I've gone one way, you've gone another. I wish you all the best. I hold no bad feelings to you. Like, Mm. Go do your thing, bro. Do you know what I mean, man? Like, go live life. Like, you paid your fucking, you paid your dues. I've, uh, I've smashed it. I'm, I'm surprised you've like agreed to to meet up. Really? Like, a lot yeah. of people say that, you know. Yeah, because I just think it's mad. Like, if someone was to stab me, mm. I'll just think F- you for the rest of my life. Yeah, man. I Not think... that I would seek revenge or anything. Do you know what's mad, just, bro? Like, I don't want anything to do with you, even if you tried. Do you know what's it's mad? It's almost bro? like, a, like, a, no, I can't. I'm friends with my ex, so I don't even matter. <laughs> but, but it's almost like a, a I know what you're saying. No, no, I, man, I completely understand what you're saying. But for me, bro, like harboring bad feelings drives my energy. Yeah. So for, like, I live a positive life, but I've always been like since since I changed my mindset and I come out of depression and PTSD and all the fucking madness that I was going through, bro. Mm. A big part of the, that change was becoming a positive person. And I think it made me let go of a lot of negative, a lot of negative um, thoughts I had towards people. And I think one way that I got over that attack was being able to let that go. Do you know what I mean? Because there was no way, you know, if I sat there and beat myself up about it every single day, oh man, he's out. Oh yeah, he's not paid. Da, 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 da. I'm going to have this negative like feeling o- over me constantly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I'm like, I don't want to live like that. I don't yeah, want to live like that, man. Yeah, yeah, man, he's done fucking 10 years, bro. Like, mate, his life's completely changed, you know what I mean? And, and I think at the time, mate, I'll find out more when I speak to him, you know what I mean? How old is he? Do you know? Uh, I think he was four years older than me. So he'd be, what, 33 30, now? Something 30, like, yeah, 34? Yeah, something like that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is mad shit. Mad, bro. Mad. I want to ask, because I was I was reading up on, on this upon you, and um, I'm just put, I was putting two two in my head together, yeah. right? Um, I read that within 2019, you almost fell back into depression. Yeah, bro. Yeah, is that yeah. partly the reason why? Because uh, Nah, bro, nothing to do with him. Okay. Nothing, nah, so nah. it wasn't like all the memories just coming straight nah, back, nah, flooding man. in. Do, do you know what it is, bro? Like for me, like I hold myself to a very high standard now. Um, and that's like within the way I train, where my nutrition, uh, I do a lot of mindset work, a lot of self-development. I read, I, do pod, uh, I listen to podcasts, I do courses. I probably spent like over 80 grand on fucking mentorships, bro. Is it? Uh, yeah, man. I'm like, purely on yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, bro, it's just good for you. It's just yeah. good for you. Like, like literally, mate, it's mad because like, you'll pay a, an hour for a personal trainer, but would you pay an hour for someone to sit there and help you Process all this shit that's going on in your head. Like, I ain't be funny, man. We've just been through a fucking mad lockdown that no one can explain. Like, we're living in fear. We had all this mad anxiety. Like, you need to process that shit, man. Yeah. Like, a lot of people just gone back and think, oh, that's done now. And you know so, what the good thing is as well? CEO cast is free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mate, there you <laughs> go, bro. A <laughs> little plug there, going. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. continue. Man, but you know what I'm saying, though? So, it's like, 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 you need to spend time with your thoughts, man. You need to, like, digest all this mad stuff that's going on, man. So, it's like, and, like, at that point, what had happened basically, like, I opened this place. It was a big success. Um, but for me, bro, it wasn't it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was almost like I got to the top of the hill and it was like, oh, fuck off, there's another one there, do you know what I mean? It was just like, it messed me up a little bit, like, obviously on a smaller scale, but like, you know, like Tyson Fury obviously won the world championship and, and then like, it, and, and it, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, that, bro. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it just messed me up, man. It was like, you know, I've, I was very, like, I've always been very motivated to time and like driven, like I want to get stuff done. Like, and um, it was almost like I burnt myself out. 
and then it was like, oh shit, I've got a lot more to do. Was it, did you, at the time of that point, did you more or less achieve every single goal that you wanted to achieve? On my list at the, at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so then at that point, that's when you think, okay. I need some more shit to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think, I think the maddest thing as well, bro, it's like I'm not really, like, I'm not depressed, but I do suffer with depression, do you know what I mean? And, mm. and how I explain it to people, like, depression's a moment in time, do you know what I mean? Like, there's a beginning and an end to it, like, you don't tend to stay in it unless you want to, do you know what I mean? You can get out of depression, and it's just, you know, it's how I sort of explain it to myself, which helps me, is like, your actions matching your outcome. So it's like, you've got an outcome, you've got a goal, what you want to achieve, are your actions matching that? So obviously, if you want to be a millionaire or you want to be in shape, are the things that you're doing matching up to the person that you want to be? Yeah. And at that time, it wasn't, you know what I mean? I fell off, it was like a burnt out. I wasn't doing my mindset stuff, I wasn't training as much, I wasn't doing my nutrition. It was almost like I looked in the mirror one day and was like, who the fuck are you, do you know what I mean? You're not, you're not that guy, do you know what I mean? And it messed me up and it was like, right, I need to, I need to change, I need to get myself back on track again. And I went through like the last 18 months, I was just, smashing training, exercise, nutrition, mindset, and uh, got myself in a really good place, man. Like, obviously smashed the business again, like, ready to level up again. Yeah. And it's a process, bro, and I think that's what I'm sort of like dealing with now. It's like, I don't think it's that, like I'm ever not gonna have those thoughts, but now I manage them a lot better, and it's and that's all down to, you know, self-development. And, and how you, and, so how long did you suffer for depression for after you got stabbed? Uh, about two years. Um, yeah, it was like, it was hard, man, because it was like I didn't realize I was depressed. Yeah. Obviously, like that, I, I don't think you, you, don't, know, you yeah, don't know what it is, yeah. do you? Do you know what I mean? And PTSD, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but it was like I was, it was mad because it was like I was getting into fights over nothing. Uh, it was like I'd feel threatened and my fight or flight would just kick in and it would be like, do or die. Like, these people are going to try and kill you. You need to stop them. And that's how my mind was working. It was like, it wasn't like we're going to get into an altercation. It was like, I need to fucking stop these people from killing me. So you just go like a, le a level Insane. above, yeah, yeah, mate. And it was just like, you'd get a red mist and you'd just go crazy. Yeah. Um, and like, obviously when I got that diagnosed, it was sort of like, okay, I, I understand what, what those feelings are now. And it helped me pr like process that. Um, and you know, I went to counseling and stuff, but it was like, it was very like, arm around you, like, there, there, like, are you okay? What, like, you one of the be ones so where proud. you're in, sat in a circle? No, nah, no, nah, it was like a one-on-one -on -one sort one -on -one of thing. Yeah, was that therapy then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And it was just like you know, like very like you should be so very proud of yourself. And I'm like, man, I got stabbed in the heart. Do you know what I mean? This is what I want to. This is what I hear. I want to hear like you're gonna be sweet. Get your shit together. Mm. Like we're on. Go 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 yeah. get it done. Back do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you got shit to do. Yeah. And that's how I respond. Like, I respond very well to like tough love. Um, I prefer that. Do you know I what I mean? Think same for me as well. To be yeah. fair. And um, that's the reason why I wanted to get Tate on because he's tough. Yeah, but man. It's, it's in a good way. Yeah, definitely. But did you watch the podcast with Tate? Yeah, Bunch I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to ask you, with you experiencing mental health and depression and yeah. stuff like that, what's your views on how Tate thinks of it? I think he's bang on with it, to be fair. Is it? Yeah, yeah, man. I think, I think the thing is, it's like he says a lot of things that are going to be triggering to a lot of people, but if you don't understand how it works, do you know what I mean? I think, I think what he's done is been quite blunt and been very honest about it yeah. without actually explaining how people fall into depression in the first place. Yeah, and it yeah, is yeah. having that self-confidence and that, and that, you know, believing in yourself, that self-belief, but you create that over time. So like what I say to my clients is like, you know, confidence is, is fulfilling a promise to yourself. Mm. So like, and that can be big or small. Like obviously if you're in depression, you don't want to set a huge fucking goal I'm of like, one, yeah. yo, I'm going to go be a millionaire now. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, no, you mate, you're depressed and like your actions ain't, ain't going to matter that but you can go for a walk and you can go to the gym do you know what I mean and maybe like you want to go see your friends and go out for a drink like whatever the goal is how big or small it is once you achieve it it will give you more confidence to set another one mm. so if you start off with a goal this big and then it gives you the confidence to this one and gives you the confidence to this one and over time man you'll so have the confidence step, isn't it? Curve, yeah. mate I didn't come out of depression and start you know, oh I'm going to build a gym and it's going to make this much money and we're going to transform this many people and go worldwide like that wasn't my goal initially yeah. my goal was to go back to boxing my goal was to get back into the gym. And then my goal was to you know, become a personal trainer. My goal was to step on stage. Like all these l mini Different goals things, yeah. have given me the confidence to be this person now, yeah. do you know what I mean? And it's like, I understand exactly what he's saying, but I know it will be how it will be received as well, because me in depression that many years ago would have looked at him and been like, you cheeky bastard, do you know what I mean? But now we understand, like now from my perspective, I completely understand what he's saying, do you know what I mean? So when's your meeting with him, the guy? Uh, a couple of weeks, I think, yeah. Are you definitely going to go? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to call oh. you and uh, I think 
I think there definitely needs to be an update. Yeah. Whether you want to share it on CEO Cast or not. Yeah, bro. It's another thing, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's mad interesting just to think that you. That, 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 that was sort of saying it to me, man. They were saying, like, oh, you sure you want to do it? And, like. And you I'm got like, Mrs. Avenue? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. does she think of it? Man, they're all scared, innit, it, man? They're all like. The, the maddest thing is, like, obviously, he's the boogeyman, innit? Yeah, he's saying. the boogeyman, bro. Like, yeah. after, after all this time, like, he was the guy that fucking destroyed me. Yeah. He destroyed me, bro. Like, mentally, bro. I was, that's, sui- that's I was like, suicidal, man. That's like Thanos and Iron Man. Thing. Thanos. Yeah, yeah. Conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally. Yeah, exactly Mookie, like, what you done? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, but for me, bro, like, after this, after everything that I've done, bro, like, life is full of experiences. Full yeah. of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so many, like, things that we can go into and talk about where I've had, like, ups and downs and, you know, adversity introduces a man to himself, man. Like, you become a, a better version of yourself from going through things. And I think, what an experience to sit down with a person that changed my life. Do you know what I mean? And, and just see, just see, and it see. Like it could go so many different ways. It could be so many different conversations. But I'll never know until I go down and do it. Man, I can build this up in my head to be something that it's not. It could be something completely different. Interesting, isn't it? You got heart to do that. Yeah, you got heart to do that. So if you're watching this, chances are you're an entrepreneur or founder trying to figure out how to successfully navigate the rocket ship that is growth. Well, worry no more because our friends over at Wix, yes, the website and business building platform, definitely know a thing or two about turning a startup business into a global organization serving millions. They've been at it for over 16 years and now they want to share what they've learned with you. And even better, because you guys like podcasts, they're doing it in a micro podcast series called Ready for Takeoff by Wix, where the company's founders and leaders across all broad from HR, finance and education, share super short lessons and anecdotes designed to help you build better products and teams faster and support your customer base like never before. So make sure you tune in to Ready for Takeoff by Wix, a new podcast that will help supercharge your business one episode at a time. So subscribe and follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to CEO Cast right now. So throwing it back to when you come out of hospital and whatnot, obviously you, you had time off essentially, right? Yeah. You couldn't go back into boxing. Yeah. So how did you get into the whole fitness game? Where did this journey start from? Okay, so basically what had happened after I realised that I couldn't box anymore, uh, a lot of my friends were going to the gym anyway, and there was a local gym around the corner from us, Stevie B's, and they were like, do you want to uh, Work out. Do you want to come with us, man? Do you know what I mean? Even if you don't lift anything, just come with us for the social. Mm. Oh, sweet, man. So I went in there, and everyone had knew, obviously from the area and that, like, I had a big social circle when I was at college, so like I had a lot of friends from all over the place. I had a lot of friends in the gyms, I had a lot of friends yeah. in boxing. Big, massive social circle. So when I walked in there, everyone was like, oh, you're back, man. Like, come round me and that. And it was like a nice feeling, man, to be like out of the house, but also like experience. Welcomed. Yeah, man, yeah. and just have that support there. And a lot of them were like, you know, asking me about it. They were asking me, like, have I recovered yet? And I was like, yeah, no, like, not fully, but, you know, I'm, I want to get back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, one of the lads there, he was, uh, he sort of like was helping me train before. So he almost like, he knew me from before. He knew that I boxed. He knew what I was capable of. And he was just giving me some pointers. He was like, you know, you're going to have a lot of scar tissue build up. Like you don't really want to do any bench pressing. Like maybe just stick to arms and legs for the, for the time being mm-hmm. and just fix machines. Um, that's what I done. I just, you know, got back into it. Um, which was mad, man, because it was like then, because I had, I wasn't working. I had no like time. I had a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to go to gym every day. You know what I mean? So it was just like, I started going every day. And it was just like, the, the, as my like, body started to change, because I lost a lot of weight when I was in hospital. Like, I was stick. When, when you came out, what size were you? And I was stuff like stick thin, bro. I was like, you know, like eight stone. Like, oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was, I was this, this tall. You are about six foot? Yeah, about six foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, like, mate, nothing left of me. I was skin and bone, man. I lost it all. Um, so I started seeing my body change again. You I got was yeah, I got loads, bro. I might have to ask. Yeah, man, I'll send him over. Yeah, I'll send him over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, man, I was like, skin and bone. Um, so like, when I started seeing my body change, I was getting this like, buzz from it, man. Like, like, no, nah, man, I can. Yeah, you do as, yeah, as you know, yeah, you're, man. Like, as you're going in the gym, you've seen progression. That's that. it, I man. Get a little it. pump on and that. You know yeah. what I mean? And this is what this is the beauty of it, bro. Because it's like you know, I've been there. I've been the skinny person. I've also been the fat person. So when I get people come through these doors, I can resonate with them, man. I understand what it feels like to, to feel them feelings, man. Feeling like you can't do it. Mm. Feeling self-confident. Feel like, man, I wouldn't. Even, I'd wear t-shirts like this all the time. Do you know what I mean? High neck. Yeah. Like I didn't want to show my scar. I wouldn't show my body. Like if I went on holiday, I'd be wearing a t-shirt. Like. It was at the time as well, like, you know, like, the fucking low cut okay, tops yeah, and yeah, yeah. that, you know, ones. Yeah. So obviously I weren't wearing none of them, mate. It was all like up here. Um, I was very self-conscious, man. I, hate, I hated the way that I looked, I hated the scar. And it was, the maddest thing is like, like, when I show people, the first thing they would do, go, ugh. Like, pull a face, you know what is I mean? It? Yeah, man, like, you'd show them, like, because it was still like a, like a scab at yeah, the time. Yeah, it was yeah. like an open wound still, yeah. it was still healing. So a lot of people were like, oh, fucking hell, man. 
So like, so I'm thinking, right, mate, I think I look fucking horrible. Do you know what I mean? It was messing with my head. Yeah, it would fuck with your head, yeah. So obviously I wanted to, I thought, Do you know what, man, let me get in good shape and then I'll, I'll give them something to look at. You know what I mean? So if they look at me, man, they'll probably look at my fucking, my, my body rather than the scar yeah, sort scary. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, bro, I just fell in love with it, man. I just, like, it stopped me from like drinking, it stopped me from like going out, fighting. And I just, as I progressively got more into it, I, w- I become obsessed with it, bro. Honestly, I, t- I like I just wanted to to learn everything about it, man. I was just like, like I want to learn everything about training. I want to learn everything about nutrition, but I also want to learn everything about the mindset behind it because that was the biggest thing I was struggling with. Like was the was the depression mm. um, and the PTSD. So I was like, you know, if I can reframe my mind, then obviously this is gonna help me. Help yeah, man, just yeah. help me become a, be- a better person. I'm more able to deal with it. And uh, and that's what I done, man. Like it just progressively like got more. How old more would you shape. have been at that point then? Uh, so it was like 17, 18, 19, probably like twenty. So like four years. Oh, sorry, like sorry. So after after I'd done a year of training at seventeen. Yeah. Um, it was like halfway through my from being eighteen that I got chatting to a lad in the gym who was doing a uh, apprenticeship in a boxing gym. Yep. So. I was like, wow, oh, man, that's a bit of me, do you know what I mean? So I was like, at the time I was getting paid for labouring, I was making good dough, I was still working top man a few hours, I was still doing my electrics course as well. Um, so I was like, like, I have to leave all that and, and go and do this, but like, I'm loving training that much at the minute and it's doing so much for me, like, why wouldn't I want to go into that? So I took a big pay cut, like, The Apprentice was like fucking three pound an hour or something, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it weren't good money, but it was something that I wanted to do. Um, and obviously I had a sales background as well, I worked in call centres and stuff, and I've always been quite a chatty person. So when I got there, it was almost like, I just ducked to water sort of thing, I just was really good at it. I was good at, I got clients straight off the bat, like, people was just obviously like, enjoying my company and, and when they found out what had happened I think that was also like a, a bit of a wow moment you know what I mean like what you that was a year ago and now you're here and you're training me you're holding pads for me and stuff and I was like yeah man like, yeah, it's like I, it's, it's almost like inspiring it's, for them strong, yeah. yeah man yeah. so they were like they were inspired by it as well so that helped me gain clients um and then obviously the more and more I progressed into the, the bodybuilding side of things I was getting bigger I was getting in better shape um, I thought, you know what, man, I want to I wanna actually like, start working with a North Awareness project. I want to go into schools, I want to talk to kids, I want to share this, like, you know, this journey with them and, and, and make them know, like, you know, the, the scary side of like, carrying knives and that. Because like, I think a lot of these kids wouldn't even understand, do you know what I mean? Like, they're doing it, but to physically see someone that's been through it and what they experience is a completely different story. So I started working with a North Awareness campaign um, and then I thought, do you know, I'm going to do a bodybuilding show, but I'm going to do it to raise awareness for the, the North Awareness campaign. So that's what I've done. I stepped on stage. I come second in my first competition, but it got picked up by a uh, like a news agency, and it just got blasted out like all around the world. And I woke up to a lot of messages from like people in Croatia, uh, all over the place, America, and um, off the back of that, we got like. Like loads of things happen, man. Yeah, it was just like you know, I was on the news. I was in um, BBC Three, Amazing Humans. Uh, we done. Uh, what else have we done? Fit Media done a piece on me. Uh, yeah, man, it was just non-stop, so man. The whole everything you do right now is yeah. it still is knife crime pre- prevention still in like in you? Yeah, so like it's something that I definitely am aware. Like I, I, I want to help with. I think what happened for me was like at the time I was going through it, it wasn't as big of a problem. Yeah. Um. So like when we went to the police and stuff, they were like, oh, it's not because that would have been what year? Um, twenty fifteen. 2014. No, I couldn't because how old is I? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, around then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now knife crimes everywhere. Everywhere, bro. And yeah. it's the thing. It's what we were trying to warn them about at the time. We were saying all these things, but mate, it's such a, it's a weird, it's a weird place, man. Mm. Awareness is because they get like there's a lot of funding out there for youth projects. Yeah, there's, there's a guy down in London who does it. I believe his name's Farron Alexis or something. Yeah. I think it's like that. I want to get. His, I want to make sure I get his name right. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of people who who doing all them sort of stuff. Yeah, man, but it was, like, it was quite difficult to get funding and stuff because a, a lot of the funding would go to, like, obviously established um, youth charities. Yeah, I think, but, I, yeah, I think this is the guy's name, Farron, Farron Alex Paul. Yeah. Possibly. But yeah, he just, ra- look, so basically he just, he goes around to people and stuff like that. Oh, I've seen knives. him, yeah, yeah, I've seen him yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite, it's quite sick what he does, but yeah, yeah knife crime is mad in London, wasn't yeah, it? Mate, yeah, it's mad, bro. and here it is as well, but like at the time, bro, the no one was, was taking yeah, it serious. It was quite, yeah. yeah, so like for me, it was like, mate, I was doing it all for free. So I would leave here, oh, well, not here, obviously leave the gym that I was working at, yeah. and I'd shoot across town to a- a- any school that w- would want us. I'd do the assembly, I'd do like the, the private sessions and stuff, all for free, like I, wouldn't, I didn't want a penny out of it, mm. do you know what I mean? It was something that I wanted to do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But the project was just struggling, so 
so bad to get any funding that it become harder and harder to deliver the sessions. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was just difficult, bro. So I thought, you know what, man, let me go away, build my own business, help people in the process. And then when I'm at a stage that I can help, I will help. Do you know what I mean? So I still go and do talks and stuff now if people need me to. Um, but ideally what I want to do is start my own charity that can basically fund this sort of stuff mm. um, myself rather than having to rely on anyone else. Yeah, man, because it was just, it was just so difficult to get it. Um, that it made it hard. And then it was like, you know, you go in, you do a couple of sessions with kids, open their minds to it. You know, some of them would want, it, want to leave the gangs that they were a part of. And then you can go up, go and do a follow up. So it was just. That's half the reason why I started this podcast as well, yeah. you know, because I'm not going to say I know a lot of people in gangs and stuff like that, because yeah, I yeah. don't. Yeah. But the thought of it, and I get messages from people all the time of yeah. helping them open their minds. Yeah. To be in that sort of position, definitely. To open, to open in their minds and think, okay, cool, I want to start a business. Let me drop the knife. Let me drop the gun. One hundred percent, bro. And start a business. Yeah. Like, to me, that that is mad. Exactly what you were saying earlier off camera. Yeah, money is one thing. We yeah. all want money. Don't get me wrong. We yeah. want to live life and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But the feeling of that. Yeah, man. And and transforming someone's life the way you do it in fitness yeah. and I do it through podcasts and yeah, keep yeah, stories yeah. like yourselves is yeah. next level. One hundred percent, bro. It's Sick. so much more fulfilling, isn't it? Yeah. And that's it. And you realize that, like, I think a lot of people will be in pursuit of money. Yeah. And then when they get it. It's you don't like, know what to do. You're a bit like, yeah. okay, cool. Like, I think money, like my opinion, I think money comes. Yeah. It will come and go. Yeah. Oh, so money, money, yeah. it's money. Yeah. Money makes the world go around. Eventually, yeah. you'll get some. Yeah. But I think as long as you have a goal and a target, yeah. whilst you're, you know, doing carry on with life, yeah. money will just naturally come anyway. So oh, that's it, man. Like I try and explain to people, it's like you know, money comes from the value that you provide. Yeah. So it's like if you're providing more value, you'll get paid more money. Exactly. So yeah. like what we do, we provide a lot of value. Like I, I put all my focus on the delivery mm. and the money will take care of itself because people want to experience the product. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They want to experience the program and be a part of it. Mm. So like that stuff takes care of itself. But my goal is to, when you come here, I want you to have an amazing experience. I want you to leave here and only have good things to say about yeah. your experience, yeah, me, the yeah, other you trainers. Want, you want to make sure yeah, man. Point, and, yeah. And, it, and if that's good, mate, for more people come through. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it's like a lot of people will focus too much on the numbers getting money, getting money, and then you just become a bit of a vulture, man, and people are like, people smell that. Mm. Like, well, you're a bit of a... Just away, money hungry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's like, if you just focus on the service that you're delivering and the value that you're providing, that stuff, that will come. naturally going to come into it. Bro. Yeah. At what point did you have the gym, though? Because I'm assuming, obviously, when you're training people and helping people, yeah. you're probably going to their gyms and... Yeah, know, so, yeah, so it was out of other gyms, so what I'd do is pay a rent, so you pay a rent yeah. uh, for the space, and then you deliver your sessions yeah, in course, someone yeah. else's gym. So basically, what had happened was I got a lot of traction from my initial body transformation program that I put together. Was it always called the pigeon? Uh, nah, nah, nah. So the, initially the, the gym that I was working at, it was, I was branded as uh, Kieran Quinlan Fitness, KQ Fitness. It okay, was. so you, you didn't, okay, it the was just a, yeah, this gym. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So it was just, I was just a, a person delivering sessions. Yeah. Um, and then obviously after all the publicity that I got, I built a, a body transformation program. So I basically just took everything that I'd learned and put it into a package and thought, do you know what, let me get people in shape and, and make them commit to it. Because a big part of like what's wrong with personal trainers is, is personal trainers will sell their time for money. So they'll go, okay, uh, it's 30 pound an hour. All right, you training an hour a week is not gonna make a blind bit of difference to you. No. You're not gonna get in you shape. You need a lot of sessions. You need a lot of fucking yeah. sessions, bro. You know what I mean? You need consistency. You also need nutritional guidance. You need accountability. You need to be weighed in. You need the education side as well. You need to understand what you're actually taking part in. Like You're going through a transition, do you know what I mean? And you need all the tools to be able to do that. Yeah. Whereas uh, you with someone an hour a week, they just want your 30 quid or your 50 quid or whatever. 100%, and if they, if they sell you the idea of exactly yeah. that, right? Yeah. That 30 quid and you're gonna get sold how many hours in uh, yeah. a week do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, that's yeah. going to get expensive 100 bro and the thing is if you're not if you don't understand how to get in shape this person can tell you anything man like i, see, I go to pure gym easy gyms and i watch personal trainers stand next to their client on a treadmill for 30 minutes i'm like you can stand on a treadmill on your own bro, bro don't pay 50 quid to stand i remember next to when i was in sixth form no right and the first time i went to a gym it was easy gym in ilford right and yeah. there was a personal trainer there and i was just, i was obsessed with the idea of yeah. getting hench because it was a lot of people yeah, in yeah. school right so I went to the personal trainer, I was like, yeah, what, how much you charge? And he was like, 20 quid an hour. I was like, oh, that sounds sweet. So, you know, how can you help me? He goes, well, you're going to need about five sessions a week. Yeah. And I just done the math in my head. I was like, yo, yeah, you well. want a hundred quid <laughs> for a boy who's in sixth form, yeah, yeah, not yeah. even earning a penny. Or yeah. I think I had a job, but it was, yeah. you know what I mean? Like over the course of a month, you yeah, want me to spend yeah, yeah. 500 pounds for your time just yeah. to 
supposedly get me hench. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's true though, bro. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, about, man, and that's like, when I just learn everything on YouTube and stuff. And like that, as you do, and, and as you do, bro. Like you say, mate, and it's all the information's out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of it's contradicting. And if you don't understand, and like, a, if you don't understand it, you'll start gr- clutching at straws. I'll try a bit of this, try a bit of this, try a bit of this, which yeah. ruins the consistency. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the idea, of what's going to get you in shape, is doing diet. And uh, diet and training yeah. consistently for an extended period of time. Yeah, for sure. And it's the consistency that's going to get you the results. Mm. It's can you stick it out? Can you do this day in day out? Can you say no to the to the social events? Can you say no to that fucking cookie that's on the side? Can you? <laughs> can you know what I mean, can you say no, bro? And can yeah. you be resilient and have the willpower and discipline to continue this process for a period of time that you get the results that you want? Yeah. yeah? Whereas like a, tra- a personal trainer, if he's selling you time for money and you just like, as an hour and you do an hour this week and you might miss next week, and you do a couple of the next week, it's inconsistent. So not only is the trainer inconsistent, now you're inconsistent, which breeds inconsistency. And the thing is, if you if you in set in a, if you get, if you're consistent and you go through a period where things change, well, I'll give you yeah. an example, right? Cool. So before in 2019, I was quite a big guy. This yeah. is before CEO cost. I was quite yeah, big, yeah. quite fit, quite yeah. I wouldn't say the leanest, but yeah, I was yeah. a lot better shaped than I am now, yeah, right? Yeah. Lockdown come, and then one thing my family decided to put on on the cards was at 5 p.m. Everyone come down, have a cup of tea and a few biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That pattern, as, as great as it is, because you spend family time and yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff, is, is it's a bad habit. Yeah. Because it still happens still today. <laughs> and I've only broken up about, yeah. about a couple of months ago, if that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. And that's what's made me the way I am right yeah, now. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But now I've said to myself, no, nah, like, I can't do that once anymore. I need to get back into yeah, it. Yeah, man. And once you make that decision, bro, it's just like it's being like, committed to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think once you've got a plan and you can see how that's going to work and you can stick to it and it's consistent, like, bro. Every, everybody can do it. Yeah. Everybody is literally just how you frame it. And I think, you know, like a big part of like why people aren't successful with yeah. their fitness journeys is because the goal isn't compelling enough in the first no, place. No, 100%. Because I'll say something like, oh, I need to lose some weight. And it's like, you know, that's not a compelling goal. You don't wake up in the morning and go, okay, I need to lose some weight. Like, you need to be very specific with what you want to achieve. Like, how much weight do you want to lose? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? How's that going to make you feel? How's it going to feel for other people? Like, you need this whole, like, journey and story in your head that you can tell yourself every day like that moment when you feel like not going to the gym you need to tell yourself like why am i doing this i want to oh i've got the, i've got that holiday coming up i want to be in shape for yeah, that i don't want to walk down the beach feeling self-conscious i want to yeah. wear that dress that i've got do you know what i mean like you need to have that in your head and you also need to have what's at stake but like, if i don't do it how am i going to feel i'm going to feel shit. i'm going to feel self-conscious i'm not going to wear that dress i'm not going to like the way that i look i'm going to feel embarrassed do you know what i mean like mm. It's moving from pain to pleasure, do you know what I mean? And we can take people through that journey. So, What's it like for you then, when you're taking someone through that journey and yeah. you get to the, to the end of it, and yeah. essentially they're, they're transformed, the mindset's transformed, the yeah. body's transformed. Yeah. What's that feeling like for you as a person? Yeah, man, it's fulfilling, man. It's, like yeah. it's fulfilled. It, it fills you with pride, do you know what I mean? Especially, like the thing is for me, it's like, obviously I've been through an experience that not many people have been through. So when I see that same thing in people, and I see the pain and the frustration and I see like they're, they're, they're struggling, do you know what I mean? And they don't, they can't see a way out. Like for me, like showing them this is the golden ticket, man. It's like, I'm going to show you not only how to get in shape and look sick, like I'm going to show you how to manage your thoughts to the point where you can be disciplined and have willpower and understand, you know, you can do anything. You can literally do anything that you want, providing that you have this skill set and that's going to be developed through your own, your own training. Yeah. So if you can, you know, no one controls the food that you put in your mouth. No one controls your body. I can't fucking move your legs and put you on a treadmill. Like, that's all you. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So once you understand that this is an individual journey and it's all you, I can give you the tools, but you've got to do it. Once you do that, mate, you can do anything, man. I'm the telling you. Way, it yeah. all starts with you, bro. Yeah. yeah. I read on your website as well, right? That there was something about suicide prevention. Yeah. It's like you, you helped. Yeah, you yeah. Stop th- suicides. Yeah, what, so it's been, like, I think it's 15 suicides now. What yeah, was yeah. It, what's it? How, how so? So basically, what happens is, like, you know, like, uh, just I'll give you a, a brief, like, example. There was, uh, so when we, when we have people into the gym, it's application only. Yeah. So everybody that we speak to over the phone um, has applied to the gym. We don't let random people come in. Yeah. Because, one, because it ruins the vibe. Like, everyone's here for the same reason. They understand the journey that they're embarking on. And it's a good community of people, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're all experiencing the same thing. So it's important that that vibe stays, stays the same. The same yeah. We don't want like Is people it, coming in that don't share that mindset. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, man. If I feel like I'm not going to work well with people, we'll just say no to them. Um, it's, it is what it is, do you know what I mean? I feel like you need to be in a type of, you need to be in a type of place in order to understand what this is and, 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 and how to do it basically. Mm. Um, so speaking to people on the phone, like one of the lads that I spoke to, um, you know, we asked questions like, what do you feel like the biggest challenge preventing you from getting in shape is right now? And 
they'll tell you, mate. Like, as soon as you answer, ask that question, a lot of people will really be, oh, um, you know, I've got no motivation. Um, you know, I struggle because I work from home uh, and little things like that. But you'll get the odd person that'll be, I'm severely depressed. I'm, I'm thinking about taking my own life. Do you know what I mean? And so like, you hear someone say that, mate. It's like, you have a duty of care to that person. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like, like, obviously, one is have these old, the relevant people, but also, like, now, I want to help you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want you to feel like this anymore. And if I can give you some sort of purpose, which stems from you, which will be initially your training, it's like, get control of yourself, get control of your thoughts. Like, at the, at the moment, you probably feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're not making any progress. You feel like you, nothing's going to change. Well, fucking pull them out of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let's, yeah. Get them, let's get them focused on themselves. Let's get them focused on progression. Like, it's ingrained in us as humans to develop, push forward, progress. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if you look back at fucking cavemen, they were writing on a wall with a brick, you know what I mean? Now we've got cameras set up and you just on your phone, man, yeah. you know what I mean? On the internet, you know, yeah. like, we're, we're progressing, man, constantly. Like, this ain't the end, man. We're going to go through so many more stages of progression. Like, look at medicine, look at the world, look at travel. Like, yeah, everything's was, progressing yeah, at an alarming natural, rate, yeah. man. Like, rapid. So, so it's in humans that we, we need to do that. So when you feel trapped and stagnant and you feel like you're not progressing, you'll have these feelings, you know what I mean? Feelings of depression, you have these feelings of suicide. Like, if you can give someone that progression, it'll change the way they think, man. And like, so as we take people through these journeys, like a lot of people will come out, you know, before before I come here, I was suicidal. Um, you know, you, you've saved my life, you've changed my life, like, and it's just, and it's crazy feeling, man, because I've been there. Do you know what I mean? I understand what it feels like, so I can, you know, like I say, man, I can resonate with these people. So I was, I was thinking about that as well. I was gonna say, did you ever feel suicidal? Oh, hundred percent, bro. Yeah, for for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, and it was like, did you ever wish this is gonna sound like a very my open my mm-hmm. question right yeah did you ever wish that 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 knife ended you uh yeah there was times man yeah yeah, yeah there was times i think i think uh, there was a, like there was a, a really bad stage uh of like the depression where i was like i, I was not myself at all man i was like i couldn't even hold a conversation with people anymore man it was just like i had nothing i was just like i didn't feel anything i was just mm. had nothing and um it was at that point i went to the doctors and I said, I was like, listen, I'm, I'm really not. I didn't really go to doctors at any point, man, and, until then. And I was like, listen, I'm, I'm in a really bad place, man. I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something stupid, man. I can't get these thoughts out of my head. Yeah. So like every time I was on my own, man, I was just thinking about how I was gonna do it, who would find me, like mad shit like that. And uh, I said, to, I said it all to the doctor. And he went, well, do you want a week off work? I went, I'm, I'm self-employed, mate. Like I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm. Is this, during, week, having... uh, this was before, so just before before I got the first gym. Okay, um, cool. And he he was like, "Well, do you want to take these tablets?" Yeah. I went, "Listen, bro, I, was like, I don't want to take anything. I was like, I want, I want, I want to feel better. I was like, I don't, these ain't gonna, these ain't gonna fix it." He went, "Well, I can put you on a waiting list for counselling, but it's gonna be six months." I went, "Mate, you're not hearing me, man." I was like, "I've come here because I'm gonna do something stupid." And you're putting me on waiting list for and six he, months. Yeah. And he and he went, "What do you want me to do?" You're helping people get off like any sort of tablets as well. Yeah, yeah, man. So what's that, the importance of that? It, it's exactly the same thing, bro. Honestly, it's it's once people understand that they're not stuck and they're more capable than they think they are, and mm. they have more power than they think they have, and once they start believing in themselves and have the confidence to actually go and get what they want, mate, they don't need it anymore. Yeah. I think a, a big part of like depression and anxiety is. People, they're fearful, do you know what I mean? They're fearful of the future, they, they're, they're scared, that they, they don't have the ability to stop feeling the way that they're feeling. And once you can show them that they can, they do. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. just reinforcing that to them and just giving them a helping hand. And, you know, sometimes they need tough love. Sometimes they need an arm around them and just that encouragement as well. And I think it's just knowing your audience and understanding, you know, what people need. And obviously being through, I've gone through it, through it all myself. You know, I understand what people need and how they respond to certain things. So, you know, I've been doing this for over 11 years now. I've experienced every type of client, um, you know, all walks of life, different shapes and sizes. And for me, it's, you know, the process is the same and it's just explaining that to the individual and, and, and helping it just resonate with them and understand that they can do it. It's just a process that they need to follow. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Definitely. Now that we've covered your story, yeah, and yeah. I want to appreciate you covering everything in your yeah, story. Yeah, no, awesome. right? I want to understand the business more, right? So obviously yeah. we're here right now yeah. and it's almost, I don't want to say retail, but it's, it's location based, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously there's, I'm not going to say there's a limit to how much you can do here, yeah. but you you want to get a bigger yeah, gym right now. Yeah, 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 definitely. Team. But definitely. also someone like myself who's based in London, you're yeah. based in Birmingham. Yeah. I definitely want to go through this like body transformation and this whole mindset yeah, yeah, transformation. Yeah, yeah. But how do I do that if I'm based in London and you're so 300 miles away? That's it, man. That's a difficult thing about what we do. Um, 
because it's so specific and it is like hand holding through the whole process. So like for, for me, it's like taking people that have never trained in their lives to photo shoot shape. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like, in order to do that, there's a lot of education that goes into it. It's showing people how to exercise. It's showing people why they exercise. It's showing people nutrition. So like at the moment, we can only do it from this location. There is, we can create an online program. We have done it in the past, but for the level that we have to, uh, the level of service that we have to provide for the individual, it, do, it becomes unworth it for us to do it online. So what I, the business model that I have, I'd rather roll it out. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather keep developing what we've got and do multiple locations and, and keep developing staff. So yeah. one of the things that I'm doing at the moment is creating a, uh, a personal training course. Right? It's a body transformation course. So it's teaching personal trainers level three and level four how to become a body transformation coach because it's completely different. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Personal trainer will show you how to train. A body transformation coach will show you how to transform. So it's all the things that I've learned over the years of doing this and, and putting it into a course package so that when I do come to, to roll this out, that people can go through my course and learn exactly the model that I'm delivering uh, and how to do that with clients. Would you do a course that is is tailored for the end consumer, right? Because yep. I'll give you an example. Someone like, because um, they, they can make a lot of money as well. Someone, there's a there's a guy on TikTok, his name's yeah. HS Tiki Toki, right? Yeah. I don't know if you've come across him. Or anything. <laughs> but um, Mad I man. think he's 20 years old, been flogging off courses and yep. he's recently got a Lambo. So yeah, it definitely yeah, yeah. pays him well. Yeah. I don't know the value of it because I've never yeah. purchased it, but I mean, he's in good shape himself. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can only assume that it's good things, yeah. right? So would you ever do something like that? Yeah, potentially. Um, I think I think the thing for me is it's like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts to what I do at the moment. There's no one doing what I do. This is completely unique. Um, you know, I've looked all over the, the UK and no one's, no one's delivering the, the level of transformation that I'm delivering it at the capacity I'm delivering at, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing like 240 crazy transformations every every 12 weeks, and that's like specific to the individual. Um, so like to do something on this scale is actually like, you know, it's hard work, yeah. but I have developed a system that I'm p taking the goals that I've bought on now. So there's eight staff here now that I'm teaching how to de deliver my program. Mm. Um, so, it's it's there, do you know what I mean? It's going to be a time thing more than it because it's finding the right people. It's finding people that are compassionate and caring as well as educated and informative as well because it's quite difficult to find that in personal trainers because it's quite a... What's the word? Uh, without offending everyone. It's, uh, so it it's, a, it's a bit of a posing in industry. Okay. I think people like the thought of being a personal trainer because it's a cool job. Yeah. Whereas like it actually goes much deeper than that. Like You need to care about your clients. They need to be priority, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, if you understand that you're taking this person for a journey and what's at stake here, like, like I say, like some of these people are suicidal, some of these people are depressed, some of these people have anxiety. It's like when you understand what you're doing for someone, it becomes a lot more of a serious job. And once you take it more serious, people take you more serious. And that's when they're willing to pay more and they'll be with you for longer as well, you build a bond with your clients, whereas a lot of people they see you as 30 pound an hour. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Right. I've got a question that I would really want you to answer, right? Go on. You obviously love what you do right now, yeah, man, and you also love boxing as well, yeah, yeah. What do you have more of a love for? This, this, yeah, 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 by miles or uh, yeah, 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 why? I think obviously boxing is something that I can't, I, I can't, well, I probably could now, but like I haven't done so. And I think for me as well, like boxing is a very individual sport, it's you versus someone else. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Obviously you've got a team around you that can help you get to that point, but once you're in a ring, it's you versus you. Yeah. And it's a very internal thing that it becomes basically like, who's obviously more skilled or who's got more heart. Um, whereas this, this is universal, bro. Like this is something that you can give to everybody and it's like, everybody can experience this. And I think in the time that we live in now, like it's getting, Depression's on the rise, male suicide's on the rise, anxiety's on the rise. Like everybody is dealing with some sort of mental health issue at the moment, do you know what I mean? Or will at some point, do you know what I mean? Or know somebody that is, do you know what I mean? So it's not like, this can change the way people are thinking, do you know what I mean? The way people are, like they care about themselves, the way they care about others. And I think this has just got so much more, like, there's just so much more to it, man. And it's just, you know, it's something that I love doing. It's something that's fulfilling. And it's something that I feel like everybody needs to experience. Mm. So. Anything else you want to cover? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Bro. I think yeah. we covered quite a lot. Yeah, we covered right? loads. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kieran, I want to thank you very much oh, for coming on to your podcast, sharing man. your story, sharing the knowledge. And do you know what? Interesting story. I think it deserves at least 20,000 likes on this, yeah, on this man, podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So if you see this, make sure you <laughs> share it, run up the numbers, <laughs> do all that good stuff. Um, and until then, I'll catch you next week on the next episode of CEO Cast. Kieran, once again, thank you very much for coming awesome, on. Man. Brother, thank amazing you. Amazing story. Amazing yeah. story. Sick. Cheers, man.